The ATF, I did not realize this, has made owning guns illegal. Well, sort of. I own this 22 and my dad gave it to me. And I just found out this thing is going to cause me a world of problems. Found out that in 1968, Congress passed a bill, the Firearms Act of 1968 or something like that. And it may not even have the right date. It doesn't matter and I don't really care. And they put all kinds of, well, I don't know. They didn't even really put all kinds of restrictions in place, but that's when they started doing the, uh, you had to do the background check paperwork and you had an FFL license to sell firearms. So not every hardware store in America could sell them. I remember watching a Jesse James documentary about a bank robbery he did in Minnesota. I actually drove past that bank a lot when I was consulting. The townspeople fought off the bank robbery by going over to the hardware store and picking up some guns and they all surrounded the bank. It, it was an interesting story. I don't even know if I'm telling that right, but that's how I remember the documentary. In this 1968 bill, they gave a, authority to the ATF. And that's what happens with a lot of our laws in the United States. They give the authority to some administrative body who is not an elected official. So Congress said that the ATF could make regulations or laws unless Congress makes a law forbidding them to make that law, which I don't think they've ever done. Now, I want to give a little backstory here. Just last year, I think it was last year, the Supreme Court made a decision that the EPA was no longer allowed to make regulations. And everybody got excited about this because then that meant that all these little alphabet bodies could no longer make laws. Well, they continued. I mean, we've just heard that they're trying to ban wood stove, not wood stoves, excuse me. Well, actually, yeah, wood stoves is a good example. I just made a video the day before yesterday where I talked about the EPA put all kinds of regulations in place on wood stoves. Well, technically, they're not allowed to do that, but did they erase the laws after the Supreme Court said they couldn't do it? No. Are they continuing to be more aggressive? Yes. But they also, this year, have put restrictions on gas stoves, I think air conditionings, I think they're just, they're right now trying to do ceiling fans, putting all kinds of restrictions on them. Wash machines, dryers, dishwashers, I, I don't remember the whole list, but there was a large list of appliances that they're putting restrictions on. Well, that seems to me that they're still making laws. I've always had this problem, which is if the Supreme Court makes a decision, who enforces that decision? Well, Congress does, apparently. I mean, Congress can impeach whoever for violating the Supreme Court, but they don't do it. I mean, just recently our president violated a Supreme Court order. Supreme Court said that it was illegal for the president to force landlords to continue to rent to tenants who were not paying. So landlords weren't making any money, the tenants were living there for free, all because of the uh, mandates, you know, the lockdowns and all that. They said, no, you can't do that. Well, he did it anyways. So there, nobody's enforcing these things. And all you hear in Congress is hearings, they hold hearings and they, I'm going to stop you from doing this. It looks good on TV, makes a good show, but they never stop anybody from doing it. I just made a video, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe a year ago, where there is a trigger mechanism that you can buy for your firearm that will shoot a bullet when you pull the trigger down and shoot a bullet when you let go of the trigger. So boom, 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 boom. That is not, according to the law I read, against the law, the 1968 Firearms Act, or whatever it is. The definition of a legal firearm is that you have one release of a projectile for every trigger pull. It didn't say anything about the release. Well, the ATF decided that is considered an automatic device. They, by letting go of that trigger, it's now automatic. So they went around without warrants, without anything, and going to the people's houses, telling them they have to relinquish their trigger. I don't know where, the, how far that went. I just saw a bunch of videos of people saying, I'm not gonna give you, I'm not gonna tell you, I'm not gonna. Uh, so you either had to give it up or you had to tell them that you sold it and who you sold it to. Last year, I made a video and I was talking about my county, the county of Missouri. There was actually two counties that did this, but my county was the first one to do it. The ATF wanted to come down and look at concealed carry permit 
at the sheriff's office, wanted to audit their permit. Well, concealed carry in the state of Missouri is constitutional. We don't even need a permit anymore. The only reason you go get a permit is if you travel out state to a state that allows Missourians to travel through with concealed carry. If that state needs a permit, then you would have to provide a permit. But in the state of Missouri, you don't have to have a permit anymore. In 2012, I got my permit, but I've let it expire. So I can carry, I can open carry. I don't recommend open carry, but that's a whole different debate. And then also last year, I made a video where I talked about the ATF coming up to some guy's door, I think in Vermont. Don't quote me on the state. And I'm sure a lot of people saw this video. They knocked on the guy's door, neighbors all around, people who are not really dressed as officers, but there was a couple state police there, again, in civilian clothes, and a couple ATF agents there. The ATF agent says, uh, did you just recently buy some firearms? And the guy, you know, he's got a baby in the house asleep, and he doesn't want to wake the baby. The neighbors are whispering across the street and pointing, and he gets stressed. And instead of saying, where's your warrant? He says, yeah. And so the ATF agent said, well, I'm going to need to see those firearms so he brings one out because again he doesn't want them to come in and they check the serial number and they say okay thank you and he said well what about the rest of them so apparently there's some sort of law that the ATF can come and look at your firearms if you've made multiple purchases in one month they want to see if you're you're selling them straw purchases so you're buying it and giving it to someone else or selling to someone else so that tells me what I just said at the beginning of the video. So all these things put together tells me that the ATF believes you have a right to bear arms, but they don't believe you have a right to own arms. And essentially, their thought process is they own the firearm. Even though the company manufactures it, the company sells it to the firearms dealer, the firearms dealer sells it to you. Technically, according to the ATF, they own it. There was another situation, I, I don't know when this one happened, but a guy took his firearm to the dealer. And he says, could you sell this for me? And you'll, of course, get a commission. So, and a lot of firearms dealers do that. So they'll put it in their case. I guess it's consignment is what it is. So they sell it on consignment. They'll ask you how much you want for it. Well, I want 400 bucks for it. They'll slap a ticket on 450. They keep the 50 bucks. And so the firearms dealer is doing all the paperwork all the FFL stuff and the background checks so when somebody comes in and buys it all the paperwork's done the guy gets the gun and then the original owner gets the 400 bucks and the dealer gets 50 bucks everybody wins the ATF said no he sold a gun for profit the guy the original owner also has to be an FFL licensed dealer so there was a big hoopla. I'm, again, not sure what really happened with this. But as a firearms advocate, owner, Second Amendment supporter, these kind of things bother me bad. Now, granted, back in 2008, I really fought for my rights. I did everything I could. Like I said, I got my concealed carry permit. I bought a bunch of firearms. I kept the ammo companies in business. I used to be an NRA member, the whole deal. Well, eventually, the state of Missouri got better and better. I, I guess I really should say that, because Missouri used to be pretty restrictive on guns. I remember the first pistol I bought, I had to go get a background check at the dealer. So my dad gave me a gun, so I had to go get a background check at the dealer. They registered the firearm. Then I had to go to the sheriff's office and get another background check, same background check the whatever form you got to fill out when you go get a, a firearm same one and you had to give the sheriff i don't know 30 bucks or something so there was two background checks the sheriff and then they the sheriff says okay you can have a firearm well they got rid of that and everything just quickly got better from that point on and i, I really did appreciate the state of missouri and, and the way they allowed you to own firearms and now like i said you can carry guns in the state of missouri in the open without a permit. A few years ago, I was robbed. My house was burglarized. They broke in twice. Once on a Wednesday and then the very next Wednesday they broke in. I, the first time they got all my pistols, but my rifles were locked up. They were on the walls with individual locks. 
The pistols were scattered throughout the house. When he broke in, he took the pistols. I secured the house, boarded up the windows, did everything I could to keep the guy out. Well, he eventually got back in a week later and was able to take my Dremel and cut all the locks off my rifles and shotguns and took those too. So I made two insurance claims, one each week apart. Well, the insurance company dropped me. I was able to replace two firearms. I replaced a, a revolver I had, a 357 Magnum revolver. Oh, no, three of firearms, actually. I replaced a 357 Magnum Henry rifle. So my theory always was is to have guns that use the same ammo. So like a pistol with a 357 Magnum round and a rifle with a 357 Magnum round. And I love that Henry. That, that was the greatest gun in the world. And then I bought a 22 Henry. My philosophy has always been on 22s. A lot of people don't agree with me, and I don't really care. I'm tired of arguing about it. I'm a big advocate of 22s. You can defend yourself with a 22, and there's a lot of advantages to having a 22 as a defense weapon, especially if you have something over a thousand feet per second velocity bullet. You don't have to wear earplugs, so when you're defending yourself, you're not making yourself go deaf. I mean, think about this. You, you shoot your firearm in a defensive situation. There's multiple bad guys, but you can't hear the second bad guy because your ears are ringing so bad. So the 22 does doesn't do that. Not as much recoil. You can practice a, a lot because it's cheap ammo. Just, there's a ton of reasons. Again, I don't need to give an explanation. I'm sure somebody in the comment section is gonna tell me, oh, you're a wussy. Except replace the W with the P. Just like when I'm canning food, they love to tell me I'm a wussy, except replace the W with a P. So then we went traveling as nomads and somebody burnt down my camper. So the three guns that I got replaced ended up burning up in that fire. Well, I just never replaced them. Since then, my father, the older he gets, has been giving me his firearms. So I've got a couple shotguns. I've got a, a 30 6 rifle. I've got two 22s. And then I have my original 22 carry pistol, my little Ruger. So that's, that's all I got. Well, this one he just gave me, and I've spent a little bit of time on this one. I like this one. Coincidentally, years ago, he gave me another 22, just like this, both a Marlin. But that Marlin never shot right. I refurbished it, stained it, clear-coated it. It's beautiful, but it just doesn't shoot right. It never ejects correctly. Well, I found out why. When I got this gun, I started doing some research. Back then, they didn't have YouTube. This one I started doing research on, I figured out why it jams up. I mean, everything in there is very sensitive and it's gotta be cleaned all the time. Sometimes that spring gets kinked up in there. There's just different reasons. So I spent some time, I replaced a couple parts on this, bought some parts, replaced it, and it shoots perfectly now. Just repeat fire. I don't wanna waste my ammo, so I would demonstrate. I demonstrated in a previous video that this thing shoots really well. My right eye is basically gone. The doctors have blinded me using, making me use steroids for an allergy. So I put this laser sight on it and that has helped me immensely shoot this quickly. So any varmints around here that are causing problems with the chickens I can get rid of. And it has, it's gotten rid of a couple of varmints already. But this gun is gonna cause me a world of problems. The Supreme Court is supposed to look at the ATF and whether all the regulations they make are constitutional or not. Well, the word's already out. that It's not constitutional, the Supreme Court's gonna say so. But before the hearing, the ATF intends to pass another regulation or law that says, I cannot sell this gun unless I'm a licensed FFL dealer. I can't take it to a, a gun shop and have them sell it for me. If I make a profit on this gun, I have to have a license. Well, I don't know how to get a license. I'm not going to spend the time and money to do it. So I will never be able to sell this gun because dad gave it to me for free. Now I can give it away, but I can't sell it. So all the guns I own in the house, I cannot sell. I have to give them away because dad gave them all to me. Otherwise, I'm in violation of this new regulation. They're going to do this before the Supreme Court hearing. That way, if they don't rule that all the laws that they have made as void, we'd still have to comply with that law. Again, this just demonstrates that the ATF believe you have a right to bear arms, but you do not have a right to own arms. I know there's a distinction there. 
for them. But for me, there is no distinction. If what they're suggesting, and I've heard this before, is the, the militia clause, the only time you can have a firearm is if you're in a militia. Well, since there is an army and National Guards now, we don't need a militia. They are the militia. So that's how the ATF looks at it. I'm hopeful the ATF is pretty much stripped of its powers, but that may not stop them from actually saying, I cannot sell this gun. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about the camper. So I hope I can inspire you to get away from it like we did so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.